Hey guys, Troy from the do-it-yourself world electronics. Um, people have requested to see my larger Bedini motor. Now this originally, and still hopefully, was planned to be a large-scale Bedini motor with um, the ability to power a house. Now, I want to explain real quick for those who scream uh, perpetual motion and um, uh, what do they call it? The laws of conservation of energy and all that. Trying to say that this is not possible. Well, I'm not calling this a generator and I'm not calling it perpetual motion. You are, not me. Therefore, this defies no laws. Okay, that having been said, let's proceed. This is a multiple coil here and I wound the wires together and it's called litzing if I remember right the wires and what you do is you spread them all out together let me see on the other side here we have three wires wound together so it's called a tri-filer tri -filer coil okay my wording is not very good but there are three wires wrapped together to form one coil and you can see here where it's twisted let me focus in on that how that coil is twisted all right right there and that improves its performance when you twist the wires like that and then wrap them together okay so this is essentially has a trigger wire and two well a trigger coil and two power coils okay and I've got them labeled here back in the day I labeled that with A and B and then the uh, trigger wire and then there's another coil with the same thing I started out I bought a whole bunch of wire back then and uh, I was gonna wrap this and I was gonna make multiple three coil spools like the one you see here and I had enough for I think I had two and a half coils I had a smaller coil which actually this I don't think was the same I had another coil up in here at one time but that's some that's got taken for another project but um, I had two of the very same coils this was a powerful motor this thing would really put out some voltage spikes and uh, I got some serious shocks from it back in the day so again same coil now as you see this one isn't hooked up okay I'm going to be bringing this back into service using the this will have essentially four power coils and two uh, trigger coils when I get it put back together and I started out really well on this. I have two bus bars made of aluminum. This is angle bracket, and I laid them, labeled them plus and minus. And really did a, you know, I really started out well. I had three power transistors. I don't know why there wasn't a fourth. Again, this is, boy, I think back from 10 years ago I started this. I built this more than that. Yeah, maybe 10 years or so ago, um, before I moved to New York. So this, this was the big boy. So I don't know why I only have one power transistor here on this coil. But I'm going to rebuild this, and I'm going to use also um, all matching. These that you can see here, this is some oddball transistor here. There's a 2N3055. And there's a 2N3055. It's it was mix, mix matched parts. I didn't have my, any money back then. I had some jumper wires here and there, um, but it really was a good start. It's a good, very good base to start working on. So the angle brackets, aluminum especially, on the collector of the transistor somehow amplifies the effect according to my studies back in the day 
and that's why you'll see that I always have aluminum on the collector of my power transistors all right now I don't expect you to understand everything now those of you who are waiting for me to build a Bedini motor I will be doing that soon I do believe this is the final video before YouTube monetizes my channel the do-it-yourself world electronics and uh, then I will be building the um, a Bedini motor on video for you all to enjoy now this one here um, I had here's another bus here aluminum of course for good conductivity I had expansion room okay here I really took my time and I uh, put all the holes in for expansion so this was meant to be a big big powerful machine alright and I had very thick output wires heavy duty um, what is that 8 gauge output wire um, this is really stiff and hard to work with so I had the positive and negative there and um, I had pretty decent input wires I had uh, jumpers cables or uh, ah, jumper cables um, alligator clamps on the ends of these the plus and minus um, going to the run battery and back then I was using a um, small uh, 7 amp hour alarm battery and I was restoring 200 amp hour um, semi truck batteries with this machine so um, it was a it was a big big machine I had three 200 amp hour semi truck batteries those big heavy duty 18 inch um, long batteries they're semi truck starting batteries so anyway um, that's the electronic side of it and I will be putting this together after I build the other Bedini motor on video. I will start rebuilding this one. This has, let me see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 um, radio shack ceramic magnets, all north poles facing outwards. And the idea um, is as a magnet passes a coil, a voltage is induced in the trigger wire which turns on the transistor causes it to conduct the power from the run battery then energizes the coils and then the mag magnet continues on its travel moves away the transistor is no longer the, the there's no longer voltage induced it collapses the transistor shuts off the run battery is disconnected, the field in the coil collapses, and here's where the interesting effect comes. When the field collapses, the radiant energy, energy from the environment, energy from the atmosphere, call it what you want, flows into the coils, and then we dump that into a battery to be charged. This is, again, I would call it a energy converter. It is not an energy generator. It converts energy that is in the air environment around us into a usable form of energy. I'm trying to use simple terms. I'm not using complicated scientific terms. So I stutter sometimes. Um, this old boy has seen some serious damage through the years. So um, it was solid. Now it's got to be rebuilt. I'm going to put it uh, another board here. And as to support this instead of using the uh, metal clamps that I had used originally it did serve its purpose but in transportation at one point uh, actually when I was moving to New York it got damaged a little bit and then moving around from home to home through the years so I'll rebuild it fully and um, the coil obviously was raised up I had adjustable pieces of wood to raise it up you want a very low clearance between the coil and the magnet so there you have it, my large scale Bedini motor, which when I finish it, can have the ability to power a household. This would have multiple coils, um, eight coils, eight coils with multiple uh, strands of wire in each coil. So it'll be a big, big, big boy. I just couldn't afford the copper wire and still can't at this time. So I'm going to start building it up slowly, bit by bit, 
and start buying wire to wrap these coils. But that's a thick coil. You can see that's a big coil. Stuffed with uh, baling wire, which I laid out and spray painted with primer. And turned them over, rotated, spray painted until all surfaces were coated. And then stuffed it in and hammered it in as tight as I could, as many strands as I could, to give it a soft core, which doesn't stay magnetized easily. So there you have it, guys. The big Bedini motor. Just to look, looking over and explanation of its future um, possibilities. Alright guys, you asked for it, there it is, the big boy. Troy from the do-it-yourself world electronics, thanks for watching, please like, subscribe, and share, and stay tuned for the building of a Benini motor on video.